<sighs> wow. That was an eight hour solid dream where I was um, both in the consciousness of Bill and Ted in a dystopic future from which they had returned after living in the far, far future where they were gods for uh, 40 years and then they came back to sort of the 2020s and silted everything out and they were so brave and uh, that was odd because um, yeah in the future they were sort of programmed with um, uh, mind chips that allowed other viewers to see their every feel see and feel their every thought and emotion and sense and yeah yeah, so I was, uh, yeah, viewing all of that. What a bonkers dream. I have no idea what the film's going to be like, but I'm going to see it when it comes out. <sighs> Table. Bowl. Fix bowl. Fix bowl. Fix bowl. Fix bowl. You put shredded weight. <laughs> Milk. Spoon. A Chrysler 300 V6 drop top with spoked rims. Still got it. <sighs> Bin time. Hmm. <sighs> Not a lot of choice with this one.
Reminds me of the uh, winter of discontent in 1979, although I don't think we're quite at that state <laughs> yet, but we're getting there. Oh, chilly one. Oh, global warming really kicking in at the end of May here with a single digit day. <laughs> in Celsius, naturally. Must be about 50 Fahrenheit now. You know, I've been so happy with the five or so free public toilets that I found in and around Norwich that uh, I haven't bothered looking for any more ones. Necessity is the mother of invention after all. I don't know if I've said this anecdote before but oh god I'm busting. Not that anecdote but how I first discovered Norwich in East Anglia. It is uh, when I was 25 I hired a car with my girlfriend at the time for a long dirty bank holiday weekend in East Anglia and the reason I chose East Anglia is because I'd never been there before and for a place so remote from uh, Wales in the west of England where I grew up I'm really taking a shine to East Anglia And who needs a towel or hair dryer when you have a a shock of a lion's mane of flowing locks in your mid fifties? <laughs> Life is getting better for me, and I hope it is for you too. And I hope these awful things that are being discussed at the World Economic Forum and Davos don't end up coming to fruition. How many vaccinations do we need in the future? That's a very good question. And I think, uh, first of all, I think we will need vaccinations in the future, but also I'm concerned that the compliance of the population with the recommendations of the experts will not be very high. More people did the first dose and then lesser did the second and then lesser will do the third and the fourth.